So my 2024 predictions, let's just say, were the tiniest bit biased. But going into 2024, and in all the videos I've made, anyone who's watched them, and thank you if you have been watching them, knows my team to beat in 2024 is the Brisbane Broncos. The biggest team in the NRL, the biggest market in the NRL after a few lean years since 2015. 2023 was without a doubt their best year, and they went alongside Penrith, and while the season was incredibly close from about third all the way to the bottom four, those two teams were clearly the outliers and they produced one of the best grand finals of the past decade. To the fact that the Brisbane Broncos were legit, you could say 20 minutes, but Nathan Cleary scored very late, so they were five minutes away from winning the grand final, going back to back in 2024, but now they have to go into 2024, doing the Penrith Panthers 2021, the Melbourne Storms 2007, the cheating bastard. They are going down the hole, you gotta lose one to win one strategy, and I can and respect it and I'm not saying the Brisbane Broncos are gonna fall off because between Ezra Mann, Paddy Carrigan and Payne Haas they have those core future young guns all locked up for a long time so honestly I can't see the Brisbane Broncos falling out of finals footy for the next decade especially if they manage to hang on to Reese Walsh but I think that this premiership window that they opened in 2023 is going to be shut this year or next year, but I do think the Brisbane Broncos are without a doubt the team to beat in 2024. I know people say this every year, but I genuinely do think that Stephen Crichton being absent from the Panthers in 2024 brings them down a peg. And while a lot of teams, especially in the middle, are improving, dare I say, nearly every team is improving in 2024, other than really the Dragons. And while they still do lose Stephen Crichton, I can understand why Penrith are still the team to beat. And I do agree that they're the team to beat, but I do think that the best team going into 2024 is the Brisbane Broncos. Because for as good as these young guns were, another year under Reese Walsh, another year under Ezra Mam, another year under Payne Haas, another year under Paddy Carrigan, the only concern I have with the Brisbane Broncos is with the halfback Adam Reynolds. And I still think that he's a top five halfback undisputedly, but between his age, his injury concerns, and the fact that unfortunately he hasn't got it done from winnable positions in the last two grand finals, I think the Brisbane Broncos have all the ingredients to go on a run and lift the trophy in October this year. So in this competition, it feels like you need two to three top 10 players in the competition. You need a bunch of origin stars and you need some experience, especially in big games. And that is why the Penrith Panthers have been so successful because they tick all those boxes and then they even do the a little bit of extension work because that's how stacked that bloody team is. But I do think the Brisbane Broncos are the only team outside of the Penrith Panthers and the Manly Seagulls that have that down to a key. I think Reese Walsh, Payne Haas, even Paddy Carrigan, you could all make the argument that they're all top 10 players in the competition. Ezra Mam's about to go to a new level. I think while he did win Dally M58 of the year in 2023, that people would still say the top tier is probably Munster, Luai, and Walker. Ezra Mam could easily smash into that top ceiling this year. So Selwyn Cobbo, I think center's going to be very interesting. I think he might just, you know, not be as good for the first bit as he adjusts to life at center because I do think there's a lot more defensive work. But I think once he gets a hang of it, he's going to be an even better player than he was on the wing. Now, they have lost Tommy Flegler and Herbie Farmer, who I would both say are in the top two of their positions, respectfully. Maybe not Flegler, but if you ask me for the majority of last year, I thought Herbie Farmer was probably the best form center in Rugby League until Critters' final series. They're going to be absolutely huge losses for the Brisbane Broncos. But the good thing for the Brisbane Broncos is that like Penrith, they have one of the biggest junior bases in the bloody world. While it kills me to say Brisbane is the place where Rugby League is loved the most. And they've got the biggest junior base. And looking at those preseason games, Holy hell, are they going to be massive, not just in terms of how good they're going to be, but I'm also talking about Ben Takura. So you combine them having a great spine, a gun backline, and probably the best forward pack in rugby league on their day, with probably the best depth in the competition, 
This is the year for the Brisbane Broncos. 2024 and 2025 is the time to strike. Now, they should have striked in 2023. There's no beating around the bush. That grand final performance is one that Brisbane Broncos fans should never watch them back unless they're getting punished. But you've got a top-tier fullback, and while we're all talking about Turbo, Teddy, Luttrell, Dylan Edwards, all these guys getting back to their best, Reese Walsh played his first full season at the Brisbane Broncos as fullback. So he's got levels to this, don't you worry. So if he goes to another level, then you're looking at probably the best fullback in the competition. You're looking at a top three, top five, five, eight. You're looking at one of the most experienced halfbacks in the competition. And I love Billy Walters, but Billy Walters, there's always going to be a weakness in a team. And if Walters can do what he did at the back end of 2023, then that's not even a weakness for the Brisbane Broncos because Billy Walters has the easiest job in the competition. Pass it to Reynolds, pass it to Walsh, pass it to Carrigan, pass it to Haas. That's all he needs to do. And on top of that, Broncos fans don't even have to worry about a dummy half because they got the next bloody young gun coming through in that position. Payne Haas and Paddy Carrigan, I know they couldn't do it in the grand final, but if any forwards can compete with Fisher Harris and Leota, it's going to be them. And Fisher Harris and Leota, I'm not counting them out. I do think Fisher Harris is the best middle forward in the competition. Dare I say a top three player in the world. Yes, you heard me. Don't fight me. Those two boys are going to be a year older. On the older side, while Haas and Carrigan are going to be a year older, on the younger side. What I'm saying is that Haas and Carrigan are going to be better, while the Odin Fisher-Harris maybe won't fall off, but I don't think they can get any better and say that Fisher-Harris, you were a god, please love me. This Brisbane Broncos team is so stacked. Not Roosters stacked, but unlike the Roosters, the Brisbane Broncos show in 2023 that they can do the job. In attack, they're brilliant and electrifying. No one can stop what they're doing. Even the Penrith Panthers had to nearly score 30 points to win that grand final. Their defense, while it probably won't be as good last year, especially at the beginning of the year with their new combinations on the edges, that is still a gun, gun backline, a gun forward back, a gun spine. Their only issue is keeping Adam Reynolds healthy and that isn't even as big as a problem as South City, Manly, and Melbourne have with their fullback. And I'm sure they're going to have so many scars because it wasn't like a Panthers, Panthers grand final. I know Panthers got smashed and then they came back. The Brisbane Broncos were literally lifting the trophy. Some of them, I bet, would have been staring at the hand, looking at how good a ring was going to be on their fingers. And then Nathan Cleary went God mode. But I do think the Brisbane Broncos, your time to strike is now in 2024 and 2025. I think they're going to be here in the top four and in the premiership mix for a long time but when it comes to this premiership window at first before they rebuild with a new seven whether it be Ezra Mam or a new gun coming through your time to strike is now you've got the wooden spoon in 2020 it's time to complete the redemption story and while I do think Penrith will be up there again and while I did too manly I do think the Brisbane Broncos are going to win the 2024 premiership but ladies and gentlemen let me know in that comment section down below who do you think is going to win that comp? Do you think I'm too high on the Brisbane Broncos? This is your chance to let me know how much of a genius or how much of a dumbass I am. Smash that like button, guys. Subscribe if you haven't already. And get ready for the NRL in Vegas. And if the Broncos get smashed, this video is going to age like a goon bag that was set on fire in the Gabbo pit.